Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the integral from 0 to 4 of 1 over x squared minus x minus 2 dx. If you'd like a hint, make sure you factor the denominator right away so that you notice that this is actually yet another improper integral. So on that note, that's exactly what I'm going to do. The denominator factors nicely into x minus 2 and x plus 1. Okay, and then we have that dx still upstairs. So I notice the integrand is discontinuous whenever the denominator is zero. So that would be at x equals positive two and at x equals negative one. Now look at our limits of integration. They're from zero to four. So the only point of discontinuity that's relevant in this problem is at x equals two because negative one is outside of the limits of integration. So how do we proceed? Two is in the middle. It doesn't have to be smack dab in the middle like it is, but it's not one of the endpoints. It's not the lower limit or the upper limit. So I have to split this into two integrals now. So we're going to go 0, 2, 2 dx over x minus 2 times x plus 1 plus, and then pick up where you left off, 2 to 4, same thing. And then each of these we'll need to evaluate separately perhaps, but I'm gonna rewrite them as a limit first because the point of discontinuity makes each of these an improper integral. So we're gonna rewrite them. I'll use t maybe as my dummy variable here. So we're gonna take the limit as t approaches two from the left for the first integral. So notice if you're going zero to two, the only way to approach two is from the left-hand side. And then now my limits are 0 to t dx over x minus 2 times x plus 1 plus, and then you need another variable. Let's do s. This time we're approaching 2 from the right, and we go s to 4 dx over x minus 2 and x plus 1. Again, if you're having a rough time figuring out from which side you're approaching, the interval is from 2 to 4. The only way to approach 2 is from the right. Okay, so we have technically two improper integrals to evaluate. Remember, though, in order for this overall integral to be convergent, each of these improper integrals must converge. So if I find that one of these diverges, I'm done. I don't have to do the other one. If one of them converges, then I still have to do the other one to make sure that they both converge. So just have your pick. I'm just going to go for the first one, okay? But I actually did do both prior to recording all of this for you people. So let's just focus on integral number one. We have the limit. T approaches 2 from the left. 0 to T dx over x minus 2, x plus 1. So looking at the integrand here, it's a rational function. So I want to find the partial free fraction decomposition so that I can integrate. So partial fraction time. So we have 1 over x minus 2, x plus 1. Both of the factors in the denominator are linear. They're not repeated. So the decomposition is just going to have the form a over x minus 2 plus b over x plus 1. And then multiply by the LCD which is x minus 2, x plus 1. And then we'll have 1 equals a times x plus 1 plus b times x minus 2. And then solve using your favorite technique. I'm just going to go ahead and substitute in values for x. So if I let x equal negative 1, I have 1 equals a times 0 plus b times negative 3 which means b is negative one third. And then if I let x equal positive two, then we have one equals a times three plus b times zero. So a is positive one third. Well, that worked out very nice. So then putting this all together, let's go back to our integral. We have the limit. It was t approaches 2 from the left, yes, 0 to t, and then we have 1 third over 
x minus 2. And then I'm going to write minus, since b was negative, 1 third over x plus 1 dx. How are we doing? Okay, good. You know, I really want to take that 1 third out. Will you allow me to do so? Okay, great. So 1 third, 1 over x minus 2 minus 1 over x plus 1. Isn't that just... So much better looking. Okay, both of those we can anti-differentiate, no big deal. So this is the limit. T approaches two from the left. One third, antiderivative of one over x minus two is gonna be natural log absolute value x minus two minus, and then similarly here we'll have natural log absolute value x plus one. And then this all gets evaluated from zero to T. And keep the one-third out. We don't need one-third in here making things looking messier than they need to be. Okay, so limit t approaches 2 from the left, one-third. This is going to be natural log absolute value t minus 2. I'm plugging in the upper limit. Minus natural log absolute value t plus 1. Minus now our lower limit, natural log if I have absolute value of zero minus two, then that's just natural log of positive two minus natural log, and then zero, zero plus one, that's just gonna be one. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. Natural log of one, that's just zero, so that's gone. All right, so now let's work on evaluating the limit. T is approaching two from the left. So that means it's coming from values smaller than two. Some like 1.9 minus two. This might make you nervous for a hot second. This is going to zero through negative values. But then thankfully, we have these absolute value bars, which means we're going to zero through positive values. That was a close one, guys, because we know natural log, its domain is restricted to only values that are positive. So do you remember the graph of natural log? I hope so. If you just, if you can't get it in your head, maybe you ought to get a tattoo. Okay, key thing to remember, it goes through one zero and then vertical asymptote x-axis. This is just the roughest little sketch. But as the argument, as the input is approaching zero from the right, see from the left would be problematic. It doesn't even live there. Natural log of x is approaching negative infinity. So this whole term right here is going to negative infinity. All right, what about the rest of the stuff? T is approaching two from the left. If I just plug in two, this is gonna be three in here. Okay, that's great. Ln of three is just a number. And then I have minus Ln of two, and then that was just zero. So we've got negative infinity minus some constants times a third, but none of that's gonna affect the fact that overall, this limit is approaching negative infinity. So that's our final result. And then what does that tell me? Well, the integral that we just evaluated from, it was from zero to two, one over x minus two, x plus one dx, this diverges. So that implies then that the overall integral from 0 to 4, 1 over, I'll write it the way it originally was without factoring, x squared minus x minus 2 is divergent as well. I don't even have to do the second improper integral. Now, I did do it just for fun. And let me scroll up and show you. I'm not going to do it here because it's so similar. This integral also diverges, it approaches positive infinity, okay? But also keep in mind, like infinities do not cancel each other out. So this one went to negative infinity, this one went to positive infinity, it doesn't matter. I didn't even need to do both. As soon as you notice one of them is not convergent, it's game over, okay? So that's just a little bit of some detail that you want to make sure you understand completely and hopefully that this limit was one that you could evaluate pretty straightforward. We didn't need to do L'Hopital's rule or anything wild today. Look at that. So 
let me know in the comments if you were able to solve this on your own. How did you like it? I know everybody gets upset when they diverge. That was what the poll revealed on Instagram. I'm so sorry. Maybe I'll find you a convergent one soon so we can all be happy. And if you need help with Calc 2 or any other topics in Calculus series 1, 2, and 3, I have full-length video lectures on my YouTube channel. They're all organized into playlists in sequential order. So check it out. And you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. Thanks, you guys, so much for your support. And I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.